Hello and welcome to another video by LFDITB. This video is the third segment in the module Interferometer, module 11. This video will cover the data processing section of the module. This will be the outline for today's video. The first is the aim or the purpose of this experiment. The second is the experimental apparatus. The third is the basic theory. Fourth, data and processing. And fifth, report format. First of all, the aim or the purpose from this experiment module 11 interferometer is to determine the value of ratio between movement of mirrors and movement of micrometer screw gauge in the michelson morley interferometer. The tools that will be used here is a precise interferometer set, one set, and an HENE laser, one set. So before we dive into the data processing section, let us review a bit of the basic theory that will be used in this module. On the upper left corner, we can see a diagram depicting the Michelson-Morley experiment setup. And here we have a coherent light source. We have a beam splitter or a half-silvered mirror. We have two mirrors, M1 and M2, as well as a detector um, or a screen. So the light source will emit light waves that will travel to the beam splitter. The beam splitter will then split this into two different light waves that will be propagated to mirror one and mirror two respectively. And both the light waves will be reflected and come back to the beam splitter to then be superpositioned and be shown in the detector or the screen. Now, due to the difference of distance traveled by the light waves from the beam splitter to the mirror, there will be a difference of phase, which can be calculated by the formula below where k is the wave number, L1 and L2 is the distance propagated by beam 1 and beam 2 between the beam splitter and the mirror M1 and M2. However, in this experiment, we are not focusing on the difference of phases, but we focus more on the value of ratio between the movement of the mirror and the movement of the screw micrometer. Now, the ratio is unique, depending on the characteristic of each instrument or tool. This ratio could be calculated by the following formula, k equals to n times lambda, divided by 2 times delta x. We can say that k is the ratio between the movement of the mirror and the movement of the micrometer screw gauge, n is the number of identical pattern repetition, lambda is the wavelength of the laser in nanometers, and delta x is the distance difference on the micrometer screw gauge in millimeters. Now, the shape or the pattern that will be shown on the detector or the screen will be most likely like the picture below, otherwise known as the Newton's ring. Now, every time we move the mirror, the pattern is going to repeat itself. And every time it repeats itself, we count that as a number of identical pattern repetition. Okay. Now, the dark and bright patterns are caused by the superposition of two waves or more. However, in this case, or in this experiment, there are only two waves, which could be constructive that create bright patterns. However, some other times, it could be destructive that create dark patterns, which explains the pattern shown in the picture. In this module, we're actually going to do two experiments. However, the first experiment is only about to set up the instruments needed. So we are only going to talk about the data and processing. For experiment number two, the mirror's shift measurement. The shift measurement will be done in two different conditions. The first one is the measurement of data of the sliding mirror with clockwise rotation of the micrometer screw gauge. And the second one is with counterclockwise rotation. Here is a table depicting of the structure of the data that we are going to take. The first column is number, just to depict the data points. And then xi in millimeters, which means the initial point of the screw gauge. And then we also have xf, which is the end point of the screw gauge after seeing a few number of identical pattern repetitions. In this case, is 5. And then there's delta x. Delta X in millimeters here can be easily counted by taking the absolute value of XF minus XI, which is 2.03. Now, one thing that needs to be considered is that this Delta X 
depicts the distance of the rotation of the screw gauge when five identical pattern repetitions are seen. After that, we already knew the lambda of our light wave, which is 633 nanometers. And with the formula in the slides before, we can calculate the value of K. For data number one, it's 779.6. We're going to take as many data as we can. However, the data is better to be taken between the range of 20 millimeters to five millimeters. Outside of that range, the sensitivity of the instrument will get worse. After getting the data that we need, we add it all up and divide it by the number of data points to acquire the average of the value of K. This is what we're looking for in this module. After that, we also do it with the second condition, the measurement of data of the sliding mirror with the counterclockwise rotation of the micrometer screw gauge, xi, xf, delta x, n, lambda, and k. Sum it up, divide it by all the data points, and we get the average of k, just like the one before. Okay, so that's it for the data processing on module 11, interferometer. Here is the report format that you can see here, uh, we have a module XX title, uh, assistant name or name of the assistant, and lab condition, experimental aim, experimental apparatus. We also have the brief theory, data and processing, analysis and discussion and conclusion, much like uh, the first semester. Okay, so that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and I hope that the practicum goes well. Thank <laughs> you.